Good morning, everybody. It is six o'clock in the morning on the 24th of January. And like people all over the country here in England and Scotland and Ireland and Wales, I am making marmalade. And this is how we do it. I use the old Delia Smith recipe. This is a demonstration of my age. Delia Smith is an amazing cook. And uh, this was the cookery book I bought when I was kind of leaving home and setting up my own setup. And as you can see, my marmalade recipe has been much used. Um, the top tip I would give you if you're going to make marmalade is get everything out and ready before you start. Because you don't want to, it's a commitment making marmalade. Especially if you make more than one batch like I do. We get through about 24 pots a year, so I need to make 24 pots of marmalade. But I'm not making 24 normal size pots. I found these pots in a jar, so I'm going to use them. Um, I found them in a cupboard, not in a jar. Anyway, so I'm all set. I've got everything here. And the recipe that uh, Dear Old Delia gives me is for traditional Seville orange marmalade. I add a bit of blood grapefruit, red grapefruit, and a good chunk of ginger to mine. That is was an idea from my friend Katie James, who's an artist. Years ago, um, she would paint these oranges in this pink scale very happily. Anyway, here we go. Let's get chopping. You've got to be prepared to get in the zone. There are many ways that I do things quickly when I'm making marmalade. I use clean, obviously, scissors to chop my peel. They need to be very sharp because otherwise it takes all day. <laughs> so. Right, here's the first batch. It took me two hours to chop everything up and get it on the boil uh, because uh, I've got to get people up for school, do the school run, have breakfast, all of that stuff. But anyway, it's now bubbling away. In the recipe, it says you need a muslin bag to put the pith and pips in, um, but I can never find my muslin bag. So a napkin will do, <laughs> tied up. Um, I must just move, you can see how it's shrinking a little bit. Um, and so I need to make sure that I take all that pith off the top, oh, the skin, chopped skin off the top of the peel, not skin, peel, the peel off the top of the bag and put it into the thing so it keeps cooking. And there it will go for another whole, couple of hours before it's ready for the next stage. You see what I mean about a commitment? The recipe says two pounds of oranges at a time, but I do three pounds of oranges. That's plenty to do at a time. If I did four, it wouldn't fit in the pan. So I'll make three batches of three pounds of oranges. So while the first lot are bubbling away for two hours on a slow simmer, I am doing things like cut up the next lot and putting plates in the freezer so that when the time comes, I can test whether I've got a set. Since it's possible that some of you are not obsessive marmalade makers, or possibly don't live in the UK where we are keen marmalade makers, and so think, why aren't you just making marmalade with any old oranges at any old time of year? Well, Seville oranges are the oranges we use for marmalade and they are in season in January. So we all wait <gasps> with bated breath until we see them in the shops. And then we rush out and buy kilos of them at a time <laughs> to make our marmalade with. And then everybody takes the whole days. I mean, this three sets of marmalade, three batches of marmalade, marmalade I'm making will take all day, but then it's done. Also very much worth remembering to just pop the jars you plan to use through the dishwasher so they're clean. Um, and then obviously they will also go in the oven to be distant to be what you know when you cook them up for a minute at 100 degrees and there are no germs what's it called you know anyway uh because otherwise Fabrizio will take the whole lot and throw it in the bin because he's a clean type unlike some people we know me never never right almost and upwards so then after a couple of hours of bubbling away you pull out this lovely bag and the idea is that you're then going to drain most of it out, but you're going to squeeze it into the 
mix because all the pectin, which is what gives you a good set, is in this bag. So I'm just taking it out and putting it onto a plate. It is too hot to touch in the short term. So I have at the same time put some put the sugar, so I've put six pounds of sugar in the oven to warm through. And the reason you put the sugar in the oven to warm through is so that it will dissolve quickly. If it's cold, it will dissolve more slowly in this mix. And um, I have chopped some ginger. So that's that's what I call a good handful of chopped ginger, and I'm gonna pop that into my mix now because we're up to the, in a minute, we're gonna start the what they call the rolling boil. So I've put the sugar in and what you have to do is make sure, can you see the grit of the sugar? So you have to really just stand over it and stir it all in until the grittiness is gone. Otherwise you'll get gritty marmalade. That's no good. And meanwhile, the pith and pips are cooling down here so that they will be cool enough for me to squeeze into the mix here. But can you see, and now you can see all the bits of ginger, which give it a lovely bit of heat. So look, I've been stirring away and all of that sugar has now melted. And if you, the reason, there are lots of reasons. A, you don't want gritty um, marmalade, but also, if you leave sugar at the bottom of the pan, not melted in, you burn it when you're doing the rolling boil. And then what I've done is taken this bag and I've squeezed, squeezed the contents of this bag into, so that's all the pectin has come out of the pips and the pith. And now I'm gonna do the rolling boil. Here we go. Now this, this is what's called a rolling boil. Any less boiling than this, and it's not a rolling boil and it won't set. This is why it is worth going to a friend's house if they have gas, because it is very hard to get a rolling boil on any other kind of cooking arrangement. It's only on gas you get hot enough. But it's worth stirring it from time to time to make sure it's not sticky on the bottom, because it will if you leave it. There you go. Top tips all over the place here. So then you have to put a little blob of marmalade on a plate, which you've had in a freezer for a while. And then you put it in the fridge for five minutes and then you take it out and look, this is what you do with your finger. And it should crease. And if it creases, you've got a set. That's not a set, okay? Sorry about my fat finger in the picture. Delicious, but it's not a set. So then you have to boil it again. So look, here it is. Can you see it's creasing? That is a set. Very, very important you get that crease. Mmm, yum. Right. So the final thing is you put a knob of butter in and that dissolves, the, the scummy bits here will dissolve in with the help of the fat from the butter. There you go. So this is really, really not, <laughs> not a healthy option, I think. <laughs> it's got six pounds of sugar in it. Four pounds of, um, no, six pounds of sugar, three pounds of oranges, one whole red grapefruit, one half lemons. There you go. There is the first batch and I'm going to pot it up. When you're filling your jars up, really fill the jar right up. Then there's less air, which means that... There's less air to let in bacteria, which can make your marmalade go off quickly. Well, hopefully this, is, this should last well over a year, but anyway. Um, the less air there is in the top, the longer it will last as a, as a ballpark thing. Look at that colour. These are Kilner jars. Oh, onwards and upwards. So, it is quarter past 12. I started at six o'clock this morning. I have six jars of marmalade and now I'm going to do it all again. I have got children up and take them to school and had two business meetings. But as you see what I mean, it's a commitment making marmalade. <laughs>